The myths and tales of the late 19th century told us that nearly one ship on a daily basis was mysteriously lost at sea. Back then, the mythical Kraken, pirates, and even Poseidon could be blamed for the ominous disappearances of these ships. But let's take a look at what actually could be the cause of these freak accidents. But before we start, let's first satiate the cynical rationalist in us. When we talk about freak accidents, what do we actually mean by that, logically? Well, they would traditionally be described as accidents that have no apparent cause, but that's exactly how myth and lore were cultivated. And this case isn't any different. With the development of science, however, things started to have more rational explanations. New methods of shipping technologies were introduced, and now, the number of freak accidents has decreased significantly. But even a decade or so before, news of at least two or three shipwrecks per week continued to haunt the lives of those who were both above and beneath sea level. Now we know who was responsible for these who killed them all. It was none other than the vicious, unforgiving sea monsters known as killer waves. And weirdly enough, even today, oceanographers are at a loss at anticipating these. Escaping them is, well, a lost battle, at least for now. But before we get into the specifics, let's take a look at what the actual science behind these waves is. These waves, more prominently known as rogue waves, are waves that originate from the swells that basically try to bulldoze existing currents. A rogue wave is usually twice the height of a normal, large wave. The wave height is the aggregate of the highest one-third of waves that occur over a given time. These waves hold the capacity to completely dismember even the biggest, most robust ships, oil rigs, etc. Tim Jansen, a research scientist who specializes in oceanography at Half Moon Bay, California, says one of the best recorded occurrences of a rogue wave is the New Year's wave of 1995. On the 1st of January, 1995, a nearly 30 meter wave viciously rocked the Dropner oil rig, located in the North Sea off Norway. And this was one of the first digital observations of a rogue wave. Those results told us that these freak waves were not limited to the nautical regions of the Atlantic Ocean or the North Sea. One of the places these rogue waves appear to pay the most frequent visits to is somewhere near the southeastern coast of South Africa. Dr. Bent Fornberg, who is an esteemed professor of applied mathematics at the University of Colorado, researched this occurrence, collaborating with Marius Gerber, who is at the University of Stellenbosch, South Africa. The latter believes that there is a specific reason these extreme large waves frequently are seen there. He too theorizes that the reason these waves occur is because of the almost whiplash-esque exchange of the developing wave swells with the currents of the water. Specifically, it happens when a big ocean swells and clashes with the rapidly moving Agullus current. When this happens, the bent currents narrowly focus and project the wave's kinetic potential energy, very similar to how an optical lens strongly focuses light into a solitary beam. Oh, also, slight disclaimer, there's a bit of science talk coming up, so we urge you to bear with us for just a little longer. It's important, folks. So, coming back, let's take a look at what Dr. Lieb Washburn a geography professor at the University of California has to say about waves interacting with currents such as the Agals. According to her, the whole process of crashing and colliding significantly reduces their wavelength. This, in turn, makes them taller and steeper. Some scientists also propose that the rogue waves may also originate from eddies, which are currents that flow in an opposite different direction to the main current. More on eddies. They are often made along the edges of currents, but they can sustain the energy for an extended period of time and have the ability to drift swiftly across coasts and oceans, forming almost like an extended eddy field over which these commute. Interestingly, these eddy sectors contain a lot more kinetic energy than usual currents do, which is what accounts for their monstrous potential. Scientists do, however, say that the immediate area of developing currents, rogue waves, can still be predicted and prepared for, and they are confined to relatively small regions. On the other hand though, energy consolidation due to the haphazard violently distributed eddies is rather less likely. As a result, it is practically impossible to predict these giant waves, as these can occur most likely in any region of large water bodies. The only way they can be predicted is if we monitor them at all times, but that is logistically very expensive and very time-taking. And this is exactly where we know to fear the wrath of nature. Are you guys getting goosebumps too? Wait till you hear this. From what we know, oceanographers and other scientists are still just at the tip of the iceberg, and no, that wasn't a titanic joke, when it comes to knowing about these rogue waves. Jansen says that these waves appear everywhere at any given time. She says the question is, how much do they actually happen? That is the clue to get at. 
We suppose that studying the frequency of these rogue waves and observing their time periods and their rate of change in motion can help us massively to predict when these can come for us. And while yes, rogue waves capture the scientific mysteries and fascination of scientists, the only way to battle natural killers like this is to design and build ships that are just safer. But we understand that is easier said than done. As of now, scientists confirmed in February that they have successfully identified the most dangerous extreme rogue wave ever that has been recorded in history. The wave walloped past Vancouver Island's coast in the November of 2020. It was nearly 60 feet high, 17.6 meters to be exact. The anomalous occurrence of this record-breaking wave thankfully didn't cause any damage to the ships or the coastal grounds nearby. However, a solitary lonely buoy who was floating in the open sea happened to witness and document the entire happening. And this is where it actually gets a little scary. The Weather Network went on to study and compare the height of the monster rogue wave to a Boeing 747, which is 250 feet tall. Yes, you heard that right. Oceanographers and scientists, with their heads in their hands, simultaneously in awe and panic, said that their study shows that a rogue wave such as this should only be occurring once in a millennia. Or, well, 1,300 years to be specific. If it is more frequent, civilization as we know it would collapse. But well, the poor lonely buoy, pun intended, that witnessed the wild, historically gigantic road wave was located nearly seven kilometers off the coast of Vancouver Island, near the hamlet of Yukluit. It was one of the 30-something buoys owned by Marine Labs. When researchers at Marine Labs saw and assessed the data, they were flabbergasted, to say the least. They quickly gathered their wits and dispatched all the nautical data to scientists at the University of Victoria. Two scientists, Johannes Jimerick and Leah Sykin, ultimately authored the pivotal study about these rogue waves. They were the ones who identified this wave as a historical anomaly. Natural disasters are something that we can't ever be prepared for. They're that swift and that dangerous. They come in and do the quick work of killing all of us. But if there's anyone who's doing avid research on studying these freaks of nature, Canada. Currently, Canada has 10,000 buoys commissioned in the waters off its coast. If all of them were programmed to have the same technology as the buoy of Ucluet, we might gather more valuable data concerning these giant waves and be able to steer clear of them when we need to. Unlike tsunamis, rogue waves tend to take place out in the open waters of the ocean. They aren't also associated with any movement of the tectonic plates which have humongous earthquakes. And as a result, scientists are still not sure of just what causes them to be and how they maintain their towering heights which contains such large amounts of gravitational energy and force. And we don't know how long will it be till they have all the answers to our questions. But that's it for today, folks. Thank you for voyaging with us through the incredible story and science of these spellbinding rogue waves that don't fathom the concept of mercy. We sincerely hope you never have to witness one. But until that, keep a lookout for more ocean content on this channel. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up press the bell icon, and definitely don't hesitate to ask us any questions or pitch requests in the comment section below. Until then, ciao folks!